Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Parr, and on this episode of Math Up to Parr, we are going to be talking about plane and solid figures, which is another name for shapes. So, flat shapes and three-dimensional shapes. Let's take a look. So, let's define, let's talk about the definitions of a plane figure and a solid figure, okay? So, a plane figure is any closed two-dimensional shape. Two-dimensional is flat. If you go watch a movie in 2D, you are just watching the flat screen. But if you go to a 3D movie, a three-dimensional movie, you put the glasses on and you can see the things pop out at you, okay? So 2D is the flat shapes, okay? Like a plain figure, okay? So it lays flat. This shape right here is a square. This shape is a rectangle. This shape is a circle. And this shape is a triangle, okay? These are all plain figures. They are closed and they are flat. All right, let's talk about solid figures. So we call them solid figures, 3D figures. But a solid figure is three-dimensional. It has length, width, and height. So this right here is a cube. This is a rectangular prism. This is a sphere, and this is a square pyramid. I also brought them to show you. So this picture of a cube right here, it's kind of see-through. But this is what a cube looks like. It's a solid figure that I can hold, okay? So that's a cube. This rectangular prism, so rectangular prisms can take a lot of different shapes. So sometimes you'll see them like this, but sometimes you'll see like a longer, skinnier one. This one actually has some square faces right here. See, that's a square, but then these are rectangles along the side. These have rectangles on all of their faces. We'll talk about faces more in a minute. This is a sphere right here. So a sphere is just a ball. Okay, this kind of dotted line and solid line just kind of shows you that it goes around. So it kind of distinguishes it, makes it look a little different from just this plain figure, this uh, circle. But this is a sphere, which is a ball. And then this right here is our square pyramid. The reason it's not just called a pyramid is because it has a square base at the bottom. Okay, so let's talk about these three-dimensional figures, and let's kind of talk about things that define them. So let's talk about things that make up a three-dimensional figure. So you're looking at a cube right here. I also have my cube right here to show you. But let's talk about a face, okay? You have a face, right? That's a flat surface on a solid figure. So that's this flat part right here. So a cube has square faces, right? So it's this flat thing. If I were to color in the front of this whole cube red, that's a face, okay? But then the sides are also faces too, right? So that's a face. All right, an angle is formed when two rays with a common endpoint call a vertex, okay? So angles are found wherever lines and or line segments intersect. So these are actually line segments, right? Because they stop, they don't go on and on forever. So it's where they meet, okay? So when we're talking about angles, we're talking more about plane figures, okay? So a, um, a an angle is right there. We also call these points right here, the vertices or a vertex, okay? So when I'm looking right here at an angle and a vertex, okay, that's like these points right here, okay, all around, okay, you get it. They go all these points. Those are my vertices or my vert vertexes if you're talking about just one, vertices is if you're talking about more than one because we don't say vertexes. Um, and then an edge, that's where two faces intersect. So if I have this face and this face, they're coming together. And that is an edge right here. So you have edges all along here. So if I were to trace that in green, this is like the edges right along here, okay? All of these are edges. All right? Thank you for being patient with my... Um, artwork down there if you can call it art. <laughs> 
Okay, guys, so let's let's get into each of these solid figures and let's talk about how many faces they have, the shape of their faces, their edges, and their vertices, okay? So we're gonna stick with a cube to start. Okay, so let's count how many faces, okay? When I count, I always count the top and the bottom. So there's one, two, then I have three, four, five, six. So I have four going around and then two on the bottom and the top. So that's a total of six faces, okay? The shapes of these faces, these are squares, right? Okay, so I'm gonna write squares. Edges, okay? To keep myself straight, I always count around the top and then around the bottom and then the sides, okay? So I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 edges. You could also count that by tracing along this. So I have four here, four here, and four here, which totals to 12. Okay? Um, I will show you at the end of this video how to draw a cube and a rectangular prism, which can help you with counting when you don't have one to hold, because we don't always have a cube to hold to count. All right, number of vertices. I count top and bottom. So I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can count it on here too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I have eight vertices. All right, let's look at a rectangular prism, okay? So my rectangular prism, let's count my faces. So I'm gonna do top and bottom. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Huh, it has the same number of faces as a cube. So interesting, okay. So, and I can count that on here too. I can count my top and my bottom and then I can count going around the sides, okay. Faces are a little bit harder to see when you have drawings, but you can use your imagination and use this to mark it. Um, the shapes of my faces, these are rectangles, right? But you remember, I also showed you that sometimes rectangular prisms can have squares for some of their faces. It's not always the case, but it is possible. So um, they are mostly, I'm going to write this in a different color. They are mostly rectangles, but they can also be squares, okay? Sorry for my handwriting. It is hard to write on a screen sometimes. Okay, so then my edges. So, so far I have the same number of faces. What do you think about the edges? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh my goodness, look at that. We've got the same amount. I'll count it on here too, just to make sure. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I've got twelve edges. Now my vertices, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I did two sides on that one. Sometimes I count top and bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That also has eight. How interesting. We'll come back and we'll talk about that. And we'll see if any of these others have the same thing. Um, the reason why I do top and then bottom or side and side, it doesn't matter what order you do that, but I would pick a system so that you don't forget. Because if you try to count like one, two, three, four, five, six, and you're counting all around, you're going to forget which ones you've already counted, which is why a lot of times a drawing will help because you can mark those off. All right, next step, I've got a square pyramid, right? So the number of faces, I don't have a face at the top. I just have a point. So I have a face at the bottom, okay? And then, so that's one, and then I have two, three, four, five, okay? So there are five faces. So, so far, that one is a little bit different. All right, the shapes of the faces. Okay, I've got four triangle faces going around, okay? But I also have a square face as my base, okay? So it is triangles. So really four triangles and one square, okay? 
let's talk about the edges. All right, so my edges, I'm gonna count, I'm gonna count around the top, which are like my sides going down. So one, two, three, four, okay, you see that? One, two, three, four, okay? And then around the base, five, six, seven, eight, okay? So I can count that here too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then my vertices, I've got four vertices at the bottom where my edges meet, but I've also got one at the top where four um, edges come together to meet. So I have a total of five vertices right here. Okay, I can mark that on here. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's talk about our hardest one. It might have been a little bit of sarcasm. Let's find out. So this is a sphere, right? How many faces does it have? A face is a flat. Look, we look back, a flat surface on a solid figure. It doesn't have any. So we're going to write zero. So the shape of the faces, we're just going to write none or NA or just leave it blank. Okay? The number of edges, there's no edges. So zero. The number of vertices, what do you think? I think you might have guessed it. Zero. So a sphere is a very unique um, three-dimensional figure because it doesn't have any faces, any edges, or any vertices. Okay? So when we look at our cube and our rectangular prism, we notice we have the same number of faces, the same number of edges, and the same number of vertices. That's because squares and rectangles have so many common characteristics. If you've watched my video on quadrilaterals, you've seen how many things they have in common. So their three-dimensional counterparts have a lot in common too, okay? The shapes of the faces can be different, okay? But the, the build of them are the same, okay? Um, so a lot of cubes and rectangular prisms, they have a lot of things in common. So if you were going to compare them using a Venn diagram, a lot of that stuff would go in the middle. All right. I told you I would show you how to draw a cube and a rectangular prism. So let's see if you can stick with me. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you draw a cube is you're going to want to draw a square. Okay. And then I'm going to take another, well, I'm going to show you in another color, but I'm going to take my square. I'm going to draw another square kind of on top of it, but a little bit overlap. You see how that happened? And it's not perfect. And yours isn't going to be perfect either. So it's important for you to see that that's okay because you'll still be able to count. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect each of the angles, each of the corners. Ta-da! Okay, so that looks kind of funny in different colors, but if you were drawing it in all one color, I'd have my square, my other square, and then I connect my corners. And there you have your cube. And then you can use it to like count your edges and your vertices, okay? So it's really cool how that works. So, oops. A rectangular prism is going to be the same type situation, right? Except instead of a square, you're going to draw a rectangle. So you draw your rectangle, okay? You draw another rectangle behind it, and then you connect your angles, your corners, okay? You could draw it tall going this way too. And if you don't want to draw it overlapping, uh, going up, you could go down and to the left. Either way you draw it, it will end up looking, as long as you kind of put it diagonal, you can do it up to the left, up to the right, down to the left, down to the right. Okay, but those are how, that's how you draw it. it takes a little bit of practice. Okay, so I am now going to draw a square pyramid. I'm not very good at it, but I'm going to do my best. So I'm going to draw my square Okay, kind of like this, and then I can kind of connect up the triangle, and then you just connect it up like that. Okay, so it doesn't look great, but if I kind of have my square kind of slanted, turn to the side, I can connect them. And you might be able to connect it out like this. It's just connecting it to the top so that you can count how many edges you have at the bottom and the sides, and then the vertices. So it just takes some practice. And then up here, you really don't need to draw because it's a ball. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening. Happy practicing.